Yeah. yeah. All right. So the first thing you need to do with the clay is you need to do what's called wedging. It's like when you're baking with bread. You need to knead out all the air bubbles so that when either firing or turning on the wheel, um, turning on the wheel, the bubbles will throw it off center and firing it'll explode. So you need to push and twist. Ideally, for at least 100 times, which we don't need to film the whole thing, but <laughs> push and twist and push and twist. Getting out as many or all the air bubbles. That's the basics of preparing the clay. And now I'm just cutting it in half to start with a smaller piece. All right, so basics of the wheel. top of the wheel and there's two holes that goes on the two pins and there's an outer tray that catches all of your water and clay there are two parts this goes together there are two holes that fit over the two pegs on the bottom of this, one peg, one peg. When you're done to take it off, there are tabs on both sides that you push on. The bigger piece, you push under the wheel. So the basin then will catch all of your water and little bits of clay that fall out so they don't fall over the ground. <clears throat> so once it is plugged in, there is an on switch on the right side here. And this foot pedal will uh, regulate the speed all the way to lower speeds. Always have a bucket of water because you'll need a lot of water while throwing. If your hands get too dry or the clay gets too dry, it pulls and twists the clay. So the first step that you do is you take a wedged piece of clay and you throw it near the center. To find the center, you can use water or your fingers. Make a little circle. Smack it on there. You can adjust it with your hands, left or right, front and back, get it kind of close. And then we go through the process of getting it centered. The clay needs to be um, put in the center so that when you're pulling up the clay, uh, you have an even point to which you can work off of. If it's off center, it's going to move around and jiggle and wing, and you'll never be able to get a good cylinder to pull up. So the most important part, and the first step that you always do, is to center. Make sure there's plenty of water on the clay. Um, and for right-handed people, uh, left-handed, you want it to go counterclockwise. You start with your left hand, wedge it into your body. Everything's wet and lubricated. 
and use your body and the motion of pushing forward to kind of work against the clay as it spins around and you're forcing it into a circle. So the bottom hand, left hand goes here, you're pushing, basically as the clay spins around, you're pushing it against your hand to get it into a circle. Other hand, your right hand is on top and pushing down to keep it from popping up. So use the full speed of the wheel, because that'll do most of the work. You're just guiding it to the center. And you press in and down. too far this way or too far that way, you can easily shift it off center. I had it centered and then knocked it off. Anytime you lift your hand off the spinning clay, you want to move off slowly so you don't knock it off center again. So there you go, clay is centered. Next step you do is, in this step you, it'll be more by preference. You need to find the center of the clay, and you can tell by when your finger stops moving around, then you press down. You can do that with one finger, this finger, you can do it with two thumbs. Making sure always to keep adding water so you're lubricated. And you just pull out towards your belly button, the other hand keeping it supported. Getting the extra water out. And there we go. And so when you're raising up You'll do it at a slower speed, and everyone gets comfortable with a, a speed that works for them. Um, some people like it. You don't want to go too slow because then it's hard. What you're trying to do is taking two or three fingers and you're pushing underneath and trying to get a, a lip of clay. And then as it goes around, you slowly move your hands up. The inside hand is there for support. The outside hand will be taking the clay, and I'll show you, you push under. As you can see, and now there's a ridge of clay, a little extra, where you've got kind of a curve. And that's the part where you get your fingers up and you slowly pull it up. Every time it goes around, once or twice, then you slowly lift up. It's better to let the, the clay go around a couple times and lift up once than to try to go up too fast because then you'll get a big twist and uneven, and it's hard to pull up if you go too fast. It's patience is what's required here. I use a sponge. You don't need to use a sponge, but I use a sponge because it helps keep it moist. Slowly pulling it up, keeping your elbows in, tied to your body. When I get to the top, I always pull off very slowly. If you pull off too fast, the spinning clay will pull out of center. Keep pulling it up slowly, a little bit at a time. I need more water on the inside. I can tell because it's dry. My fingers are gripping to the clay, which isn't good. You get a little clay. And 
Get to the top, always press down and try and keep the top even. I've gotten a little off, but it'll still work. Getting a little extra water out. You always start with the cylinder up, and then you can shape it later. I don't know how much this would want to show. So when you're done and ready to take it off, You can use your rib tool to get a lot of the extra clay off the bottom. All extra clay, you can kind of, if it's not too wet, we can save it and re-wedge it for later. It's also hard to get it down the sink. But this is called the wire tool. And you take this, it's kind of like flossing a little bit, but you put it down, you spin the wheel, and then you pull it towards yourself and it'll cut it off the bottom works a lot better if you do it while the wheel is moving because then it the spinning wheel again works for your benefit and you can just take it off a little extra water in there there's always going to be a little bit of clay so when you get to cleaning it this clay it's easiest to take it off before you get it to the sink you want when you get things to the sink when cleaning is to have as much big pieces of clay out as possible so you don't have to clean them out of the bottom of the sink. Use the rib to pull off, pushing it against the bat. Using your sponges, you can clean up all the clay. sides to get any pieces of clay that would stuck on the side while you were spinning. And then when you're going to take off this tray, be careful because if you've been doing this a while, you'll have a lot of bits of clay. Like I have some bits like this that have come off as I was working, and then a bunch of liquid. Taking your hands, putting your thumbs on each of these, I'm going to move these out of my way. Push down on the tabs and slowly get those holes underneath the tabs and lift up, keeping it flat. So inside you're going to have little bits of clay which you'll want to take out and mostly once you get to the sink get as much of it just liquid as possible. Take it over to the sink, dump out the water, and then Turn on water, water. The center one will engage the hose. And use the hose to spray out as much as you can. If you have any thick pieces, use one of the small sponges, or we have a large sponge, and wipe it down. And then you do the same thing for this one. So you can probably pause now. I don't have to show that twice. So once both sides of the bat are done, set to the side or of the, the tray, and then you need to clean off. The bat just pops off. A lot of times water or clay will seep underneath. Just take a sponge, wipe that down, wipe that down, make sure the back is wiped down. And then all clay tools will take to the sink and clean, and any extra clay that you haven't used or aren't keeping get it in one of these bags and we'll re-wedge it and dry it out and use another day. There's always going to be bags of clay up here that we can add to.
these in the sink to wash. And the wet sponge, you wipe down all the other surfaces of the wheel, making sure that everything's that to as clean as you can get it. And then once all the tools and this is all done, um, then you can get your ID at the front desk.